Hello, but hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another weekend recap of CSGO News. A lot of great stories in today's episode. It will be a short episode though, and I do want to thank our sponsor for today, and thank you guys all for watching that we can actually land these sponsors. Huge shouts to pbpro.com. I'll link my referral code down below for all of you guys to get your first free 100 coins. If you guys want to play CSGO and actually make money playing, if you use your link down below. So thanks to PB Pro guys, and now on to our big episode of CSGO News. So what is up people, hope you're all doing well. Thank you as always to all you guys who leave comments down below. And please make sure to leave one today. I'll reply to all your guys' comments. If you guys have any questions for me or questions for my sister for our future Q&A, leave those down below. Let's talk about our first story though in today's episode of CSK News and that's all about Tempo Storm and Team Immortals. Now I'm sure if you guys have not seen that latest episode, I, I relaunched my My Thoughts Don't Matter series. I talked about the fall of Immortals, Immortals becoming mortals in that in that little small talk. I'll link that video down below for all of you. But the this, this situation has continued on as we do see the down Fall of Team Immortals even progress even further as apparently Tempo Storm has, actually has interest in two of the remaining members that is actually Horvy and SHZ. Now if you guys are wondering why they might have interest in those two particular players is because of those five current members on Team Immortals, only two of them have visas to play in the USA and even leave and return to the USA whenever they want to and that's a big thing for a Brazilian player as of right now that can take weeks and weeks even if for people like Horvy it can take months and months so that's a pretty huge draw especially considering Horvy is a, a definitely a talented player a young talent on that team and SHZ alongside that so it does seem apparently Tempo Storm has interest in two of those five remaining members of Immortals and if that is actually true which uh, further stories today we actually have a Tempo Storm member Yuji leaving that squad as well he talked about how disappointed he was I'll show you guys what he had to say so one Tempo Storm member is already down we actually expect them to slim down the lineup one more person and that of course will make room for Horby and SHZ on the Tempo Storm roster and that will leave Immortals with three members who can only play in Brazil online events from Brazil themselves until they get visas figured out and definitely a broken roster. So for all of you Immortal fans out there, please leave a comment down below. What do you guys think is going to happen here? Why do you think they're doing this? And I really do think at this point we have to consider the options for Team Immortals. They still do have, of course, FNX, Henny, and Lucas on their bench and they can actually have a majority. If they bring back KNG, they can have a majority for the major spot. There have been talks out there. Now let me know what you guys think about this. There have been talks out there. What do you think about this, Noah Winston? Let your players play. Let them let play out the major. I think they're very very happy. We've seen tweets out there about how little time they've actually spent on CSGO ever since they've left the Immortals organization. We actually saw that apparently these players are playing CSGO very, very little because they're on the bench. They're not doing anything you know, too big right now. They still have the major spot. What do you guys think about the Immortals organization letting these guys back just for a week or two to play the major and see how well they do? I don't think Noah Winston will ever do that though because as a founder and a CEO of a large organization, you have to have a backbone, but can you give in when money calls? So I think as of right now, they're really Really stuck selling out these players, you know, selling out Horvy, SHZ, possibly in the future, of course, looking to get a buyout for that X Immortals trio as of right now. Will they will they let in? Will they have these players actually play out the major for Immortals? Would the players even do well? Who knows this time? Uh, Immortals, though, just a big question mark on that organization right now. But moving off on that, though, we also had some big news regarding a lot of your favorite YouTubers out there, including Mojo, Sparkles, and Mo. Uh, we also had a lot of their websites being shut down this past weekend. Now, first off, SkinWH was actually a trading website for Mo TV. Allegedly, inside sources do say one of his partners was actually scamming the company or the uh, the actual site itself, and that's why it did shut down. Now, on top of that, even more importantly, that my old sponsor NinjaSwap.com, also a trading website, uh, actually ran by Mojo and Sparkles, has also subsequently shut down as well. This is actually due to a lack of profit from the website. Um, we actually knew this was going to be a problem a long time ago. When they first sponsored me, they said they were having a big problem actually making money on the website. So yes, both those big websites from big YouTubers have shut down. So it's kind of sad to see that the trading site, uh, you know, uh, the big market over there is just so oversaturated. People are only using a set amount of websites out there. It's kind of a rarity to see people, at least YouTuber wise, besides Anomaly, actually succeed in owning a trading website. And I'm looking at my list of stories here and it seems like we've already run out of stories. This is going to be a very short episode of CSK News. Very lastly, I guess we're going to talk about uh, very quickly spoilers for, of course, I Am Oakland this past weekend and it was absolutely shocking. I don't think you could have ever convinced me of this actually happening. We had some random people out there actually predicting NIP to win this, but you could not have predicted them to win it in this kind of fashion. Of course, I want to uh, quickly point out the semifinal and final matchups were ex insanely close, both going to the last map in that series, but they, they performed quite well right from the start. Now, Rez, I also want to shout out him. He was the MD MVP of the tournament, looked and actually proved himself. If you guys had a chance to actually watch the majority of the tournament, he was a standout player for NIP. No matter what match it was, he was predominantly the standout player. Not always the leader in kills, but still uh, had an amazing talent they actually picked up there. He's looking even better than before. Now, on top of that as well, I do want to talk about, though, the way they 
they got there, of course, going 4-1 and one in groups, beating teams like Cloud9, Astralis. We'll talk about Astralis in a bit for our very last story. Alongside that, Envious, and then, of course, Mongols. Mongols, not too big of a threat in that group, but they go 4-1 and one throughout Group A. They actually land themselves a spot in the semifinals automatically, where they prove themselves even more. They actually 2-1 SK Gaming. They beat SK Gaming in a best of three, and then even off of that, they beat the number one team in the world, FaZe Clan, in a best of five. That was insane to see. Now, of course, we did have Kerrigan kind of playing some mind games with Wish Maps to veto and uh, ban and so on and so forth, but no matter what you say, guys, no matter what you say about the performance, uh, you know, a lot of times we have these tournaments come out and they say, oh, they had an easy run here, they had an easy run here. We could argue that Cloud9 and, and Astral, a weekend Astralis was an easy run for these guys. They were still in a group with SK, though, and Envious. Envious, you know, obviously, you know, not too big of a team right now, but definitely a, a quite even groups when you actually look at it guys and a 4-1 and one group spread over there you can't ask anything better and then to beat SK Gaming in a best of 3 and then of course beat FaZe Clan in a best of 5 it was an amazing experience and actually something I could not really see coming of course NIP Magic coming back to the talk after this all happens I don't see it being a prolonged thing in the future but after coming off a win like that who knows what kind of NIP we're going to see the rest of the year now bouncing off that for our very very last story kind of important we actually had IAM Oakland of course uh, talking about Device he was actually very sick going into the event he was going to be subbed in for by their coach and then eventually he came back to play for the team and then shortly after being kicked at, or knocked out of groups which of course is actually a best of one group format we hopefully not going to see it again because Astralis had the same record as two other teams and they didn't go through but probably for the best here because Device actually had a relapse according to their coach and their team and got very very sick he was rushed to the hospital uh, as of right now we do believe he is okay we're looking for updates on that but also even more importantly we had IEM post this because the team could not make their autograph signing after or during the tournament itself they will be fine so it's just kind of funny to see that in, in the loop in the in the loop of all of this of course they had to make their posts and there are rules so I, I do agree they have to be fined but you don't have to publicly say hey by the way we find a Strauss you know a set amount of money because they couldn't make it because the device being so sick maybe not make that public I don't think there are gonna be too many complainers out there saying oh hey, I did didn't get my Strauss signatures, you better be you know, charging that team some money. I think people really understand in this case that device was sick. So that did happen this past weekend. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you all in a couple days with some more CSGO news. Who knows how frequently these episodes are going to come out because as of right now it is Tuesday and I'm sure many of you guys, oh shoot, you guys don't celebrate Thanksgiving. For all you Americans out there, it's kind of a busy week uh, now on out because Thanksgiving's on a Thursday slash Friday and then everyone's kind of back in town to hang out. So I'll hopefully see you guys in a couple days with some more CSGO news and also my next episode of My Thoughts Don't Matter. Matter. I'm going to record that today, and it's going to be all about FaZe Clan. So for all you FaZe fans out there, make sure to tune into that series, My Thoughts Don't Matter, number four, coming out sometime soon. As always, leave a comment down below. Also, leave a question down below for any, any questions you guys have for me or my sister, Jenny, and we'll do a Q&A sometime soon. Hope you guys all enjoy. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye.